Do you play video games? No. No, really? No. Even Cyberpunk? No, I mean, I've seen um, demonstrations, but I've never played it. Did you know that in This Verge video was uploaded roughly a year ago. It's an interview with Kenny Reeves and Carrie Ann Moss. Most of you have probably seen this specific part of the interview and likely even formed an opinion about it. What I find quite fascinating is that not only is this video more than 15 minutes long, but it's not even about cyberpunk. Unreal Engine 5 at this year's Game Awards. We sat down with the two stars of the demo and the This interview was built to present the new Unreal Engine 5 to the public. Epic Games have paid for this promotion of the Matrix demo, which you may have also seen at some point in the past year. But of all the exciting things in the video about the game or even the engine, most of you will remember the moment Ken Reeves said he didn't even play the game he acted in. Please welcome Keanu Reeves. Many actors actually don't watch or play the content they contribute to. One example comes to mind is Johnny Depp and Pirates of the Caribbean. How did the film ultimately turn out in your view? Um, I didn't see it. There is one more and perhaps much deeper fact that loosely connects to this topic. You likely know Henry Cavill and if you're watching this video you probably know that he is an avid gamer or so he claims. He was involved in a good amount of movies and franchises, to most of them he contributed more than just with his lines. For his role in the Justice League, he made sure Clark Kent had a hairy chest because that's how he looks in the comics. Up for debate, should we have it? Um, it's something which I wanted to do because uh, in the comic book Death of Superman, he's making the ultimate sacrifice and he's got this hairy chest. His involvement in the Witcher Netflix adaptation ended up being fatal as he often clashed with the producers on the set about details of his character, Geralt and even others. And most recently he's on the trajectory to become a part of a new upcoming Warhammer 40k movie because, obviously, Henry also plays Warhammer a lot. There's the painting modeling side of the hobby and then there's the gaming side of the hobby. Okay, and when you paint them, what do you do with them then, Henry? Then you um, put them together in little armies and you fight against someone else's army. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. I've, I'm, going, I'm going Necrons next time. Necrons? Oh. Okay, all right. Cool. Were you, we? into, yes. were you into this before? Or is oh, this yeah. a new thing? Just, oh. Let's just assume that anything nerdy I've been doing for a good thing. Oh, wow. Years. We could talk for hours. <laughs> yeah, no, so, yeah, this is that, that's, that's my jam, and that's the stuff um, I, I do in my free time. Gaming is becoming much more than it used to be. Now, the stories told in games are treated with a new tone, added respect, even. And with this newfound cow to milk, it seems it's more important than ever to keep yourself reminded why do we like to establish a brand loyalty with game dev studios, or perhaps more importantly, why we shouldn't. Quality comes from passion and talent. If you want a beautiful painting or a tattoo, you will look for someone skilled and consistent. With game development or a movie production, this is no different. The real difference comes from the headcount. The more people get involved in creating a video game, the more diluted the individual skill becomes. But big studios create some of the best AAA games, right? Well, leading a company and building the team behind all the work is very different part of making the art. Your work as an individual may become crushed under the weight of expectations, different views, last minute changes or even lack of funding. Money is just one aspect to the process, but very interesting. The larger your project is, the more likely it is that the funds are being pipelined by your publisher or your sponsors, likely both. Who are sponsors? Investors that want a 
piece of your revenue. They make sure you get crazy things like can you reefs to represent your game at a major game convention. All right. He will be there, he will be actually in the game and he will sell it much easier to the audience. You're breathtaking. <laughs> You're breathtaking. You're all breathtaking. In turn, this massive investment needs to start generating the dollars back. And if you delay the payout too long, you could lose the trust of these big investors forever. That means no more new projects and maybe even bankruptcy. That's corporate talk that you maybe don't even think about when you are looking at a video game. Games just require so much more care and attention to the detail than something like a movie or a TV show. A game dev studio creates a sandbox for you to play in, make it personal and experience it exactly like you want. But, for the reasons I've already explained, these companies are under heavy fire from day one until the release, and often even beyond. What this means for you is that your attention, your wallet and your mouth or keyboard is all the same value. These things are equal to how a product that is constantly living and being used and tested does on the market. Idea of a loyalty is somehow accepted and sought after in gaming. You see it everywhere. Much like with a brand of any other kind, being loyal and protective of a game company gives you a sense of accomplishment if the company does well and puts you instantly on a defensive when it does poorly. You want to be more than a consumer, better than a regular casual player. Much like a League of Legends streamer, you will never touch an NFPS game until Riot Games comes up with one. It's like CSGO with Overwatch Ultimates, right? I say that because beside all of that, there is no upside to your faith in the commercially based software company. Brand loyalty is a choice and it just feels good to pick something you believe in and enjoy using it. With this trust comes expectations. And don't pull back, we all do it. Understandably, you associate the quality of one product from the same company to the other product they also made. Especially if you believe in the company. Maybe more than you should. More than is reasonable to assume. Big companies like to do two things. Do the same thing, slightly different, and branch out with an experiment as long as the return of the investment is guaranteed. Why? Because big companies are owned and not by the market, not by your faith and empty wallets, by the investors. If a company like Ubisoft decides to create a new IP, that sounds exciting, with new ideas that nobody has done before, you better believe they will be made to create it on the back of something that has proven to work for the market already. For the rest, they deceive you just enough so you don't even think about it. This is not an example of a terrible company abusing their consumers either. I knew it was fake! I knew it! Ubisoft is a giant that is part of the industry for 38 years this March. They do amazing games whether you like it or not. Whether you enjoy what they make or not, the reality is they deal with a knife on their necks every day to bring something people will buy. Because if they want, someone will lose their job. Rockstar, Bethesda, Ubisoft, Blizzard, Capcom, EA, Sony, CD Projekt Red, all of them, they all do it and none of them are evil. Every one of these giant companies has made bad decisions. A stupid, greedy releases that tainted a spotless record. Is that a bad thing? It's the natural thing. It's the way it always will be. Because there is never one single person behind the steering wheel. Not much of an excuse, but enough of a reason to understand why that little sparkle in your eyes every time you hear of that one company 
making something new is a little bit misguided. Having hope for a good product is nothing but wishful thinking that a good marketing team will abuse to push sales. Pre-orders is a concept that used to help small devs finance their dream project, while the big devs could justify a release of something different. Today, pre-orders are not only inevitable part of marketing that every major release has, but sometimes edging into an extortion. You can't fault these big companies for finding and abusing anything and everything they can to make more money. These people are in the business of making money, not video games. Because people who are in it for the games and for the stories, they end up in the gutter. Every company man that makes any of your favorite games gets a paycheck every year that can only be justified by turning in a big bag of golden coins. Even if you love these people, you need to realize that the moment you stop expecting from these developers to impress you, they will stop trying to. Make them steal your eyes every time. Every expectation you have should be met. You are paying for a new Lambo. You put down the $350,000. Don't let them just pull up with a Fiat Panda with a spoiler on it. They always need to do better. Be loyal to their ideas, not their words. And yes, they all make mistakes. The least you can do is stop pretending they never do. Before I leave you with these little pearls of wisdom, there is something else to say. Video games keep bleeding into other branches of entertainment every day. With that, the focus on quality and returns of major game titles only grows. Do not forget that all great successes and big missteps are always done with an intention of greatness. The only judge of that can be you. Everyone has tastes and everyone has their own truth. But the worst thing you can do is try and justify a mediocre work by presenting a different, superior titles. Be proud you like what was created instead of holding onto garbage that reminds you of better days.